now today there's one more topic left in uh, containers the block block and then we'll see file share so these two types guys container and the file share these are the two important types which you will come across a lot so we'll focus more on it and the other two type the queue and the table very rarely if there's any very non production application and if you want asynchronous sync and if you want services at a very cheap rate then then only the companies and the project will select this table and queuing service because there are dedicated services available which is doing a say synchronous queuing which is having a better NoSQL database performance or optimization so they will definitely not go with Azure storage table and queue okay so keep that in mind so let's go ahead and create one more storage account and let's host a static website on top of it so we all know that storage account can also host a static website so if you have any static pages wherein you don't want to spend uh, unnecessary cost for hosting it okay because for hosting you either need a vm you need to set up everything by yourself and then you need to host it you need to have a dns entry and many things you need to do you need to go and purchase a domain name and if you're using any third party dns provider then go ready and all you need to go and do multiple things to host a website but if you have a very simple simple not much changes to that website and it's just a static page which you're hosting just to display something online then it can be even done on storage account guys so it's it's not required that at that time you need to go and host a vm deploy your application on top of it and things like that no you don't have to do anything as such you can simply place your file in your storage account and you can host your static page on storage account how exactly it is done let's go and see it so i'm just creating the storage account again uh, guys if you have any questions please do let me know while i'm creating the storage account anyone no one did anyone try doing the practical things not just with storage account guys with vm also the vm topics what we have covered no one no questions okay no problem okay so i'm just creating um, a storage. i do have a question yep tell me okay so um i was trying to go through everything with it and recreate everything again all over but um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, so why we do the image copy, for example, mm -hmm. we do, we take an, we create the, the virtual machine that will do the image of it. So um, when, you, when you take the image copy, now you're trying to create another VM, another mm -hmm. virtual machine. It gives you an option at the bottom that says um, the number of, um, I think the number of machine you want to create from that VM, from that um, image. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, I saw like one. You can add like maybe how many you want. So my question was like, for example, if we are in the organization and they say, okay, they want us to create um maybe let's say five um mm -hmm. machine, mm -hmm. five machine, and you want to use that image to create the different five machines. So if maybe they ask in your organization that like, okay, they want the machines to have different because when I created the the um the new machine, the new VM from the image, I did install Apache. So what if they, in the organization they ask like, okay, they want you to store a different um, um, web server, maybe Tomcat or um, maybe, um, is it NGX or something? So if is that create the whole five virtual machine from that image, can I separately now use those different machine to put whatever, um, um, web server I want to within it or I have to create the the um virtual machine separately again thank you for the question and yeah perfect so if I understand it right you have an image now you want to create five VMs but with different uh, web, web server. server yes somewhere Apache somewhere Tomcat somewhere yeah. Nginx somewhere yeah. IIS 
so right. that image will not work in it you need to have multiple images because the image is again a replica copy of your vm okay. and if you want to have the exact same vm created then you can definitely go and use that image and if there's any tweak any changes you're trying to do then that image will not work either you have to go and set up the vm with the same image or you need to set up a complete new image for yourself okay so the so if, for example if i'm doing the one for let me say nginx i want to create an image from i have to take the image from an um a server that has ng nginx in there is that what mm -hmm. you're saying Correct. okay so but i thought since we are doing uh app is it um what do we do approvising like cancelling deleting everything is that the word provisioning provisioning yeah, so, since yeah. we're doing i thought since we're doing provisioning um we literally just cancel all the um maybe um software installed on that machine so it doesn't matter whatever software you get installed within it the so provisioning is basically just removing our credentials to, in order to avoid any security loop backs loopholes so we are just deleting security credentials from the image then we are creating the image so yeah okay. we are not creating any software or anything as such by using provisioning method okay so if i do a copy image if i do an image of a, a server that of a machine that has um, apache and mm -hmm. i do an image copy that image is going to have apache within it yes it will have apache in it if you have created an image with apache in it yes right. oh, okay 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 all right yeah Thanks. and good work Mumin. So Mumin has done the practical. Hopefully everyone else is also doing it, guys. Uh, because as if now, if you ask me, frankly, we are doing very easy stuff right now. It's all on cloud and we are just clicking here and there, getting the service up. Eventually, this course will become more advanced when we start working on other tools. So make sure your backlogs, if you are keeping any backlogs right now, complete those backlogs because after cloud we'll be jumping on linux post that will be jumping on git post that will be jumping on talisman then we'll be jumping on azure devops so it's it's like multiple tools and it's a drastic transition which will happen so if you are keeping any backlog make sure to clear those backlog as soon as possible and if there's any question please do come up with questions because this is the right time to ask so uh, quick question yeah. so yeah. are you so do you mean that uh we can have uh, multiple you know uh images as we want uh like she just said uh one for apache and one for engineers and so on we can have as many as we want is that what you're saying yeah if you have any such requirement jobs wherein you need to create images why do we create images first uh this is when you need a replica copy of the same VM to be created multiple times. Yeah. At that point only you will have the VM creation requirement. So yeah, if you want to, if you have any such requirement in the company where you need to keep on creating images for deploying VMs, yeah, definitely you have to do it and you need to create multiple copies. So there are image galleries which you can use to store and to share and to easily version your images so yeah if you have any such requirements you definitely have to do it okay my the uh my pre to my previous understanding was uh you can only once you deprovision uh the the image then you can only have just one copy and you can create another image so uh i got it now okay i'll try and do do the practical and see sure okay thank you very much guys so the storage account is created this is my storage account so what what exactly we are doing now using this storage account i want to host a static website so i don't have a static website right now so what should i do i should go and create one so let me have a, a very simple html page created 
let's put it uh, this way html close html i'll have a very simple header welcome to dave sec ops okay simple header nothing fancy over here and this is my html page and name it as index.html go and select html over here okay now i need one more page so this is for my posting a page now this is for if there's any error page not found suppose my page is not available let's delete it or something like that so i want to have a error page also so two pages i'm creating html index page and i'm creating an error page let's quick testing yeah this looks good second one page not found perfect okay so if there's any error then the page not found should display or else in a normal condition my index page should display that is the requirement now let's go and create a container first or else let's leave the container for now come down there is an option to in the data management there is an option to host a static website over here so just click on static website you can go and enable static website what it is asking for index document name so this is what we have created index dot html error document path this is what we have created error dot html done now once you save it it will give you a domain name a primary endpoint basically so this is the name using which you can go and access your website now if you see this this is velxy sa dot z13 this is basically my name of my storage account nice and zone 13 web dot core dot windows dot net okay so this is the primary endpoint which we can use to access my page as if now there's nothing because we have not updated any page right now so the request cannot does not exist basically there's nothing right now okay so the next thing is if you see there is a container got created dollar web and azure storage container has been created this is a this is the container where you need to put in your pages so go to go back to containers now you will find out one more container getting created automatically dollar web go inside this container put in your pages these are the two page pages perfect upload so we got index.html and we got error.html both in place let's go back to your container now let's refresh this do you see this welcome to devsecops so this is how you will be hosting a static page using a storage account now anyone anyone can in the world can access this website now this is very simple html page just imagine you're putting css html all together and you're creating a good looking website for yourself then if it's static then you can easily host in a storage account without much of headache of setting up a vm setting up uh, a dns record domain name and all this headache if you don't want you can easily host a website on storage account using a storage account now how do i get the error page if you want to have an error page so we, what we can how do we test it i can simply go and delete this index.html page and i'll just keep the error and see if i'm getting the error page not found so the page is not there the index page is not there hence i'm getting the page not found error so my even my error error is working so let's go and put the index.html again then 
refresh it welcome to devsecops make sense how do we host so this is again a very good feature of storage account wherein you can host a static website if you want okay apart from it and this is okay apart from it there is a other topic which we are starting today before that i see Mumin has multiple questions uh, if both images are there why does it only recognize a welcome to dev ops yeah error will be only visible um, Mumin, when the actual page the index page is not found okay so you're talking about the website correct the static website so it yes, will sir. only yeah it will be only visible in case if the actual page is not found if the page is there then it will not display the error thank you no problem. okay guys so the next topic is we'll talk about file share now we, we need to understand in what exactly is file share in reality anyone want to share uh, like anyone has a exposure to working with file share what exactly is a file share in a company when we say give me a space in a file share server what do I what do we mean mean by that anyone wants to share something have worked on file share or given access or asked for access on file share servers no one okay okay so file share is basically it's a storage location guys so forget about cloud for now just imagine you're working in a in a company where, where they have their own data center okay and in the data center they have a storage extra storage which they have created now that storage needs to be shared across multiple developers and multiple teams now why this storage is needed this additional storage is needed for storing logs application logs storing data and there could be many many reason why the developer might might be using that storage okay so this is a kind of additional storage which is given uh, which is given to the developers and wherein they can store bunch of data so the vm on this the server on which the application is actually running will have limited storage and it will have limited compute and things like that now where do you put this logs this garbage and all this unnecessary files where do you put this because if you start putting it on a vm your vm storage will get exhausted and eventually your application uh, performance will be bad because your vm itself is performing low now in order to avoid all such all, all such issues what we do we attach a additional storage to the vm now this additional VM is not a hard drive what we attach basically because if you keep on extending the hard drive it's a costly affair again you're talking about vertical scaling so if you keep on adding more HSD HDD SDD so it's a costly affair guys frankly speaking if you're adding more disk to your VM it's a costly affair so what best we can do so the companies what they do they have network storage basically you might have seen in your company also network storage basically what they give so network storage not in nothing it's like a sandbox it's a big storage in your data center and on top of it that storage is shared across multiple teams multiple developers for keeping application logs application files and whatever XYZ things they want to keep it on it so it's a shared storage basically so this and this is this will be mounted basically this will be mounted on the VM itself so by seeing the VM you will not even come to know whether it was what exactly it is is it is it a, a local storage or is it a file storage so you will not even come to know and you can go and store data on top of it okay so this is what the use case of file storage is all about same thing this is we are talking about in the data center okay 
okay now in the data center imagine the storage has exhausted and now you want to add some more storage so what you will do you'll go and procure those hardware again you will attach the hardware again you will reconfigure the hardware again then the storage will be available to your developers or to the client or to the xyz person whoever is using the storage now this is what normally happens okay and plus on top of it you need to manage the entire thing if there's any issues you need to go and update it you need to do the patching you need to do xyz scanning and many things you need to take care by yourself all this responsibility is our responsibility because we are managing the story by ourselves okay plus it's not cost optimized because you you have purchased 100 tb and your requirement is of 10 tb so wasting 90 tb correct so it's not even cost optimized because you cannot overcast like what will be my storage requirement in future so if the forecasting has gone bad then you will end up buying unnecessary hardware so in order to avoid all this we got in storage account in azure we got an option of file share file share is basically azure will give you a storage which can be easily mounted on end server vms which will be easily shared across multiple teams and the same storage can be mounted on multiple vms as well okay that is what file share is all about the same feature the whatever i said about the file share about the local data center everything all the features all the capabilities will be given to you plus it will be supported by cloud platforms so azure file share file offers fully manage file shares in the cloud that are accessible via the industry standard so smb server message block protocol and network file system protocol both are supported these are the two protocol which you will come across when you're setting up file share that is smb and nfs nfs i think you might have heard what is nfs so smb is basically used if you want to connect to windows and nfs is basically used if you want to connect to linux vms okay so both nfs as smb protocols are supported by azure virtual machine vms okay so how do we share so, so let's go and set up a file share and let's see how exactly this is done okay guys any question what exactly we are about to do so what we'll do again reiterating we'll have a storage account created just imagine this is storage account which is supporting file share now and this storage account is of 100 gb just imagine i'll not use 100 gb but just imagine this is of 100 gb 100 gb now i'll have vms created i'll have a vms created so just imagine this is my vm1 and this file share which i have created this file share will be mounted on on this vm so this file share will be visible somewhere over here like this and it will have a space of 100 gb this file share will be mounted on this vm it will like a local hard drive for you guys but this will be basically using nfs protocol network file share protocol using which it will be mounted nfs method this is how it will be mounted and everything will be managed at the file share if you want to increase the storage decrease the storage uh, mounting other vm and suppose there is one more vm so this i'm just giving an example of one vm suppose there's one more vm and you want to use the file share this is vm2 
the same VM. You can mount it can mount it over here also. You can have a partition created, and this can be mounted over here also. Okay, same way you can if you want to add some more VMs, you can simply add. This is what the beauty of file share is all about. So you don't have to take a headache of buying the own hardware, setting up the file share by yourself, then setting up the file share server and things like that. This can be all done using the cloud platform. Okay, so this is what we'll be doing. Now let's go and do the things in practical and let's understand how this works. This storage account will not work over here. For the purpose, this will not work, guys. So I have to go and delete this. Or I have to create a new one. I'll delete later. It's okay. Let's create a new one. Why that will not work? I'll show you. So I'll select the resource group. I'll name it as well. Let's see file share this time. Well, let's see file share. Okay. This time. Now. This time I need to create select premium. Why premium? Because if you remember when I was giving the distance use between standard and premium, premium supports network NFS. So if you want any network processing of files, then you need to select premium. Okay. In this premium, you got the second option. Do you see there's option of file share? So this is the option which we need to go and select. Rest everything I'll keep it as it is. Okay. I'll just go and review and create. So what all things I've done in doing in the performance standard will not work. So I have selected premium and the account tab I've selected at file share. So this is basically the storage account which I'm creating. This is basically I'm creating for file share. So that is the only purpose which I am creating this file share so and let me see if I have all the commands written beforehand for reference hmm. okay there's no such command okay forget about it let's move on so let's wait while this file share server is getting created. Okay, so this we got the file share created. We have the file share uh, basically the store storage account created with the performance premium and the account type file storage. This has got created. Now the second thing is we need to get this VM created first. Then this connection, how this connection is established. This is something I'll talk about later. This is a, we need to understand endpoints in order to understand this connection well, how this connection is created. But for that, let's go and create a VM first. So I can create a Ubuntu machine. Let's go and create a VM. Let's give it a name as VM1 East US availability zone. I keep it no infrastructure. Security type, I keep it as standard image. And this is the size user ID password. Let me put it as the Lexi test at 1234567. The simple VM we are creating, guys, nothing fancy over here. It's a simple VM. The only difference is I'm just allowing ports. 22 and port 80 that is what I'm allowing right now and rest I'll have a review and create them nothing fancy very simple virtual machine what we have created in which I have allowed port 22 22 is to SSH because there are several commands I need to go and execute in order to set up file share so hence port 22 plus I have enabled port 80 to access. Okay, 
so these are two things we did so this is created the file share is created i have not created the inside file share storage guys till now i just created the storage account and i have created this vm okay these two things got created we are not setting up this vm too if you want to have additional vms then you can go and set up try it by yourself let's wait while the vm is getting created okay let's wait done so you have the vm also i'm not logging in onto the vm right now we'll log in later let's go back to your storage account now go back to the file share what you have created now in this you can go to your storage account and you can create a file share where it is so till now we were creating a container correct now in the data storage option you will not see anything else the only thing you see is file share the reason is because you have selected file share to be very specific so this storage account will only support file shares nothing else keep this in mind okay now you can go and create the storage part and you need to configure the storage first so we can go and click on file share you can give whatever name you want to give over here so i can give as file share spelling mistake file share what is the provision capacity this is 1024 gb this is of 1 tb we are talking about over here guys 1 tb space i can reduce it to 100 gb i don't want to unnecessarily assign 1024 gb and get paid okay so i've selected 100 gb that's the minimum you can select if you see the minimum share size is 100 gb that is a minimum you can select hence i'm selecting 100 if minimum was 10 gb i would have selected that also but now this is the minimum which we can select and the protocol now if you see the performance maximum in and out 3100 burst it can go to 1000 not 1000 it's 10000 and throughput rate is 110 mb per second so, so it's a very nice performance which you're talking about if you're talking about a storage performance two types of protocol select uh, supported smb and nfs so this is nfs what we are selecting no root squash so basically root squash is what it will do it will make sure that it is not toggling with the root account behavior so what what will happen if you select root squash so it may end up playing around with your root access as well so no root squash i don't want to play with root make sure no root is getting squashed right now so no root privileges are getting impacted if while setting up this okay so hence no root squash create now this is created now how do i connect now this part is also done this is done now the main part is this connection this connection if you click on it file share there are two things which is uh, which it is uh, asking for network configuration and secure transfer setting if you click on network configuration there are two ways you can connect it's either create a private endpoint for the storage or either create using public endpoint now before you jump on to understand this private endpoints you need to understand what is endpoints where is my ppt what is endpoints so private endpoints allow you to access azure pass services over a private ip address within the virtual network it gets a new private ip on your vnet when you send traffic to pass resources it will also ensure the traffic stays within your virtual network i know no one has understood anything okay so what's this pass platform as a service storage account your virtual machine 
SQL Server, these are all PaaS service. These are the service provided by Azure. So what endpoints allows you to access the PaaS services over a private IP. So you have a virtual network and we to virtual network we are assigned public IP and private IP public IP if you want public access then you are assigned public IP and private IP to keep things in the back backdrop so this is what private endpoints do, does if you want to have a communication between two pri two just imagine this is your VM and this is your storage account essay and if you want to have the communication established between these two services then you need to make use of private endpoints the only difference is private endpoint will have private ip private ip so the communication is not public everything goes behind the scene making sure the network is passing through your own virtual network this is your own network and the communication is happening over a private IP. Okay, so keeping things very secure. So we, from the security perspective, also private endpoint will make more sense. It gets a new private IP, so the communication happens over a new private IP. When you send traffic to pass resources, it will always ensure the traffic stays within the network. So this is your virtual network. So making sure the traffic is within the virtual network this is what azure private endpoint means making sense the on the other hand we got service endpoints there are two types of endpoint either you call it as private link private endpoint or service endpoint service endpoint provides secure and direct connectivity to azure pass service over an optimized route now just the wordings catch the wordings guys over an optimized route that's azure backbone network traffic still left your vnet and hits the public endpoint of the parcel so this basically what will happen you will have your vnet suppose this is vnet you have your vm and your, your storage is somewhere over here and there is a backbone network so this is how it connects this is an optimized route by azure i, I think i have a diagram also wait okay this is how it will look like you got your virtual network and you got two vms you got your nick card so this is what private endpoint is so the communication is happening using a private endpoint using your same network and if you're talking about service endpoint this is how the so service endpoint is basically leaving the vnet accessing your uh, backbone network this is a uh, connecting to the storage account so this is a highly optimized line so if you want high uh, if you want high optimization you want high latency then this is the this is the network which you will be using so there are two types private endpoint and the other type is service endpoint the only difference is private endpoint the network will not leave the word and the, the traffic will not leave the virtual network wherein in service endpoint the traffic will leave the virtual network but the communication will happen over a highly optimized azure back backbone network so keep this in mind what is private endpoint what is service endpoint now in this case use case in this use case we are using private endpoint that both the options available guys so but i'll be using see set up private endpoint set up service endpoint both the options are available but i'll be keeping things more secure and i'll be using my service endpoint oh, sorry private endpoints okay let's create this create a private endpoint we don't have a private endpoint so i need to create one give whatever name you want to give you name it as private nfs okay 
if you want to select the resources you can go and select the resources target sub resource file this is okay virtual network so this will automatically select the virtual network okay and private ip configuration we can have dynamic allocated ip so automatically if the ip changes doesn't matter that's totally fine next application security group this is not needed i think we can skip it we can go to dns and this is where your subscription and the resource group are selected we have selected the subscription and the resource group next if you need to give any tags you can give a tag or review and create so what basically what we are doing we are creating a private endpoint so this is the setup right now so we have made sure the dns entry we have given access to the virtual network on which my vm is created so this is the virtual network guys so within the net network and creating this private endpoints also okay so making sure if within that network if i have another vms even that vms can be easily mounted with this file share okay so private endpoint is getting created let's wait so there were two checks guys one is for setting up network so which we are doing it right now and then there was one more check let's let's go and fix that even so let's wait while this is getting set up right now any questions guys this is something you need to do practical guys if you don't do it you'll not understand anything as simple as that go and try your hands make your hand dirty and make sure to practice as much you can because if you don't do it there's a great chance that you will not understand anything so in the ppt yeah. image uh, you so you created i mean you have shown that nick card right but in Correct. the private environment there, there is no network i mean nic created oh, yes. no it's nic will be attached to your vm basically if you see the ppt so basically what is what is happening in the private endpoint in reality so your storage account is always in public guys even though if i'm showing you that it's in the same network so there is the same network happens because of this a private endpoint which you have created so basically this private endpoint let me have the pointer so basically this private endpoint is getting created within this network and this private endpoint if you go and look closely it will have a interface card attached hence we are attaching so what did i say in my statement that it will have its own private ip how will you assign a private ip without a nic card so yeah this private endpoint will have a nic card and it will have its own private ip and the communication will happen over this this is how the communication will happen hence the nic card and all i've showed you in the diagram okay okay but and where in the other part the service endpoint there's nothing it leaves the network outside and there's a backbone network of azure using which it communicates the service point endpoint is more of more public endpoint wherein it's leaving the network and if you ask me even the private endpoint is leaving your network but the only difference is it's going through a private ip okay yeah that's good perfect okay we got this now let's go back to your storage account let's go back to file share and now let's go back to file share go to this Okay, one network configuration is done. We are done with the network configuration. Secondly, this is secure transfer settings. So we'll have to go inside this 
and for now i need to disable secure transfer why as if now till this date azure file does not doesn't support encryption in transit so transit encryption is not supported hence we'll have to go and disable this in future if something changes then i cannot say it for now this needs to be disabled okay keep this in mind now let's go and see okay both the errors are gone now there are commands guys so where where exactly you want to set uh, this configure so these are mount commands basically so basically you're mounting your file share on the end server so now the next step is my diagram this step where we mount and the storage will be available for this vm so these are the steps which you need to go and execute okay now if you see you can set it up on ubuntu you can set it up on rel you can set it up on suze whichever machine you have so we got ubuntu correct now let's go and log into ubuntu what is the ip let's go to the vm this is the vm what is the public ip copy this public ip open ss bash okay ssh well let's see at public ip we have enabled port 22 and port 80 so we can connect easily perfect logged in now we just have to simply copy paste and run these commands so app get update sudo apt update this is the first command second is we are installing nfs what did i say we'll be using nfs so we're installing nfs so we'll install nfs okay the nfs is getting installed post that it is creating a like let's copy this commands so the first command it it is creating a directory don't worry about this command guys if you're new to the new to linux after cloud i'll be starting linux wherein i'll be walking you through with all this basic command what is this app get what is this make directory what is this p and all so this is all we'll be doing so don't worry so for now just copy paste the commands later i'll explain you each and every command in a greater details when we start linux okay still downloading let's wait okay so while this is happening let me show you the other command so this is creating a directory this command is basically the where the mount is happening so mount hyphen t this is where your what type of mount protocol nfs and this is your galaxy file share dotted this is nothing but your dns name of your storage account and we are mounting this file this is the name of my file correct file share file share this is the name what we have given i should have given some unique name but it's okay and where exactly we are mounting we are mounting somewhere on this so this is the directory which we are just creating over here and what type of permissions it's version 4 minor version 1 sec sys these are all mount parameters guys so this is the parameter what we are defining okay in order to mount this particular file share now let's go and run this command if the nfs is installed yeah it's done let's create a directory done now let's go and mount so this is basically a temporary mount guys what do i mean by temporary mount if your vm restarts or shuts down or any in for any xyz reason this mount will be removed 
if you want to make a permanent mount we need to do this entry in fs tab now what is fs tab and all will not i'm not going details right now but fs tab is a file wherein if you want to do a permanent mount then you need to put that entry in the fs tab okay just keep that in mind for now let's do a temporary mount okay let me run this done how do i verify i can do a mount grab nfs do you see it's mounted galaxy file file share mounted on and this this is all mounted now let how do we test it this is i i, I ran the command nfs we got to know that this is mounted how do i test it i can test it by making going to this directory okay and over here i can create a text file or something like that so let's create a text file uh, let's name it as notes dot text and let's simply copy paste whatever we have writing over here and this copy paste it perfect so i have this created now i have this okay so i have a created of size 2461 this is a node.txt file which we have created now this is created where if you see the path this is the place where we have created file share so basically it should look to, uh, it should be visible in my portal also no it should not be visible but you can see the utilization report yeah it's not be visible over here but you can definitely see do you see use capacity size and performance what is the use capacity 2.4 kb if i have uh one more file created of the same capacity i'll have something like node hyphen one so now basically if you go and look i have two files notes and node hyphen one almost same capacity if i refresh it you see the size is increasing so this 100 gb is getting utilized right now i'm not using the local disk which is attached to this vm i am not using the local disk which is attached to this vm keep in mind okay make sure does it make sense if you want to make more if you want to do more r d come out of this folder we are not inside the folder now and just do a u mount again where's the command this is mount correct you can do a u mount mm, for doing a u mount this is what will be needed that's it u mount is my basically unmounting guys so you are removing that mount so basically what you are doing you are removing this part u mount i don't think this is required this nfs and all is not required not mounted let's go and do a quick grab and see and if this not mounted. see i'm not getting any output now let's go to the drive and see if we are getting the files this was the drive uh, let's go to this drive i don't have the files guys now total file is zero if the file was created on the local vm i would have the file now because i have u mounted u mounted just removing the mount 
no i don't have the file what's the file is not deleted the file is there how do you get the files come out of this again and just run this mount command again done now you will run the mount command to check if it is mounted where is the mount command done getting the output now go to the directory and check if you are seeing the node files which we just created this is kind of verification which i am doing just to make sure the things are getting created on my nfs perfect do you see these files are there still there now i can have this mount created and elsewhere also i can create this mount on 100 of vms and they can all utilize the same storage so this is used for storing logs data application related data which you cannot store it on your vm hard drive because that is a costly affair as compared to the hard drive this is a cheap affair guys okay makes sense now once you're done delete everything delete the resource group because there are so many services if you go in your all resources there are so many things we have created just now and if you don't delete you get a good amount of charged by azure so make sure go to the resource group and delete the resource group itself before i go and delete anyone has any questions and this is frankly you need to go and practice by yourself do it by your hands make your hand dirty then only you'll understand the concept theoretically you'll not understand anything if i after down the line next week if i ask you what is nfs no one will know what is nfs frankly so make sure practice things by yourself okay if there's any question please do let me know or else i can delete things and we can wind up the call for today anyone any questions no questions guys okay make sure to practice nfs today itself guys remove some half an hour and try to complete this today itself and if there's any doubt any question let me know tomorrow tomorrow onwards because there are multiple new people have joined so i'm starting with virtual network again i'll have couple of sessions on virtual network explaining basic of a network what is nsg what is asg so this is something i'll start for a couple of days so if you have already done with virtual network session don't worry it's a recap for you so mine my lectures are not repeated so whatever comes in my mind i just give it so it will not be a repeat so it will be a learning phase for you also make sure to join so tomorrow i'll start with virtual network and have a couple of sessions on virtual network okay yeah and questions i think someone has unmuted tell me uh, so if you uh, mount this uh, nfs and another vm so the mm -hmm. files like you created a uh, no, notepad i mean not one not two still accessible on other yes. vm right yeah that is what file share uh, it's all about you can have uh, share the file across multiple vms and multiple developers yes that will be visible over there also okay very good Remember question in these file share also again a hard disk only right in the back end maybe yeah this is actually a storage it's a storage it's not a hard disk kind of hard disk is a costly affair so it's a uh, san it's a it's a big storage what they purchase and wherein they set up this file share so because file share when we are setting we are not talking about 100 gb 200 gb we are talking about tbs tbs petabytes and this big storage we are talking about that's why we go and set up file share okay so yeah it's if you compare cost wise hard drive is more costlier than this file share no problem Kuri. good question anyone else no one so guys thank you very much let's meet up tomorrow and let's continue with cloud topic and we'll start with virtual network tomorrow okay bye bye